So the left graph is for the entire US and we can see that transportation is the largest greenhouse gas emitter. More than half of California emissions is, are coming from transportation. The medium and heavy duty sectors account for nearly 10%. What can help decarbonize this medium and heavy duty sector? The fleet owners usually tell us that we need 100 miles of range in all conditions. Even with a half percent grade, we need to almost double the size of the battery, which puts all, obviously extra weights and reduces the payload. The biggest problem is faced by the long haul truck. They would not be able to carry as much weight as the diesel vehicles. The weight is not such a big problem for short haul and delivery trucks. It is better to go with battery electric. So this means that the lowest low hanging fruits are the shorter range vehicles. Hydrogen production makes sense in terms of carbon intensity only when we can reach 100% renewable. And the efficiency of battery electric vehicle is almost twice that of fuel cell electric vehicles. The biggest uncertainty in this transition is the deployment of charging and refueling infrastructure. Somebody has to answer this question of whether it is fleet owned, public owned. Demand on the electricity grid will also be pretty high. And here I'm comparing all the different vehicle types. The cost of charging infrastructure is pretty daunting for any fleet owner. Urban resilience refers to the ability of an urban system to maintain or rapidly return to desired function in the face of a disturbance. Our inability to grow sustainably until this point and uh, to build resilience at the rate of our growth is putting us into danger. We specifically focus on transportation because we assert that it's one of the most significant lifelines in the urban system. If you looked at the system-based work, there are a lot of gaps. People don't collaborate well, they work in their own silos. I wanted to focus on this specific gap to bridge these domains and, and make people talk and collaborate. So this is sort of the result of the first collaboration that we did with UCLA. They use computer vision methodologies to model bridges one by one. So we give our system level resilience results from the transportation systems analysis to our economists so that they can quantify the economic impacts. The specific paper I'm presenting was focused on a case study in, in Palos Verdes connected fault system, a 7.3 magnitude earthquake. 40% of imports, 25% of exports go through our region. So this is a very important area and this specifically shows what we close about 144 bridges. So of course knowing this we can simulate the network. So if you have more traffic going through a region because of disrupted links in the network you're probably incurring more emissions, more noise and these, these are things that we are now interested in. The real GDP impact of port disruptions, uh, base case and resilience case, everything together mitigates 91% of the losses. Even though your network is just disrupted, some of the losses you can mitigate. Today I'm going to share something that we did in Dubai. So it's an internet national project. This is what the press has to say about uh, Dubai, the world's most improbable green city. I'm going to talk about particularly one of this sustainable city and it's actually called the sustainable city. It's a mixed use development that has about 500 villas. So the built environment boasts of a lot of sustainability features, a lot of water conserving, energy conserving measures. Being a sustainable city, they have to do this greenhouse inventory. So we wanted to help them capture mobility patterns, which would later help them uh, quantify their GHG emissions and then investigate the market for an electric car sharing initiative. People in Dubai, the dominant mode is cars. non commuters inside the TSC, we see, oh, okay, it's really active. Electric vehicles, they like them, but they see purchase price as the biggest barrier. If we were to electrify this VMT, and if we were to offer a car sharing program, what would be the pricing structure? People have a preference towards Tesla. People are willing to pay about $2.5 per hour for a car sharing service. So we are actually in a good space and people are willing to pay at least as much as the prevailing car sharing service in the city. Shedding this light on how transportation uh, operates in these sustainable communities can help the development of future smart and sustainable, so-called smart and sustainable cities.